Today I'd like to talk about the Humble Camera Bag. It's so much more than just a way of transporting your gear, it protects your livelihood. And when you fall down, your camera bag falls down, and when you get wet, your camera bag gets wet. Your camera bag also says a lot about you. Are you a fast moving shoulder, <laughs> can't say that. Are you a fast moving shoulder slinging street photographer? Or perhaps you're a messenger carrying smartly dressed hipster? Or maybe you're a wannabe 55 litre mountain man. Whichever of these you are, you'll know that your bag is incredibly important. So I am gonna go through a brief history of my camera bags and tell you how finally, finally after years and years and years, I have the bag that does everything. Almost, for now at least anyway. All right, so before we get to the bag, the perfect bag that I now own, let's start off with this. This is the Low Pro Pro Runner something, what is it? This is the bag that I thought was the perfect bag. This bag has been with me for, oof, going on eight years now. And you can tell it's an absolute mess. It only has one zip. The shoulder straps are all torn and falling apart. It's dirty, it's messy, but I absolutely loved slash love this bag. And the reason I love it is because it's so simple. Look at it. It's just big. It's just a big spacious bag with room in there for your gear, room in the lid for accessories. It has a generous front pouch for a few accessories like, I don't know, a waterproof jacket or some bottled water. It has a rain cover and it has a laptop compartment. Now for a long time, this bag was more than suitable. It was ideal, it would fit in an airplane, it traveled around the world with me, it held everything-ish until I started creating these videos. And then I started to struggle because I'd wanna go out hiking and I'd wanna take all my camera gear, all my video gear, and then a few extras as well. You know what it's like when you go hiking, you need food, you need water, you need waterproof clothing, warm clothing, all these little extra bits and pieces, and this bag, unfortunately, didn't cut the mustard for that kind of thing, but I held on to it and used it regularly for years and years and years. And yeah, also another thing as well, the, uh, the hip belt, that went, so obviously that meant I couldn't carry it over long distances. So, Moving on, moving on. This, this is a low pro tactic. Uh, something like, I, don't, I stick it on screen, I don't know the name of it. It's some sort of tactical thing. And what I like about this bag is that it's hard shell. So it is as big as it is. You can't expand it, which in a way is good because you're going on an airplane, then you know that you can sh always, always fit it in no matter how full it is. And I like this bag and I used it for a little bit. I didn't use it, you know, I paid, I paid a f couple of hundred pounds for this at least. And I just didn't use it that much because again, I always found myself going back to the big low pro because it just held everything. So as much as I love the idea of something a bit sleeker and a bit more compact, ah, I just found that I wasn't using it very much. Ah, now moving on, moving on. Manfrotto sponsored a video and they gave me this bag. They wanted me to test it. This is the Manfrotto Pro-Lite Bumblebee, I think it's called. And I was actually really impressed by this bag, it was comfortable, it was lightweight, um, it was in good condition, it held a laptop, it held most, if not all, of my gear. But, again, the same problem, I found that it didn't quite hold as much, didn't, it didn't hold as much as the massive Low Pro. And the advantage with the big Low Pro over this bag was it had a much more generous front pocket. Um, and again, just this is a very, shapely design, I suppose you would call it, so not always that practical. The Low Pro, big square, shove everything in, fantastic. So I used this for a good while and was actually really impressed with it, um, but again, I just I constantly gravitating back to the Low Pro, which was very clearly my bag of choice. All right, now I mentioned that that was almost the perfect bag, but you couldn't go hiking. Uh, because, you know, I couldn't fit enough gear in it, the hip belt was gone and it wasn't very comfortable over long distances. So I got this. This is the Low Pro Pro Rover 4... 450 or something like that. Discontinued, no longer exists, but the idea behind this bag is that it was a camera bag designed for the outdoorsman. It was for the hikers, the campers, the foragers. <laughs> I don't know who forages while taking photographs. Maybe Simon Baxter in the woods, picking his berries. Um, so... This 
was, I thought, a solution to my problem. This was almost the perfect camera bag. I could fit all of my camera gear in here, there are inserts that come with the bag. You get these inserts, you put your camera gear in there, and then you place them in the front of the bag. And this was very much the hiking photographer's rucksack. But I learned over the years, it just became a pain. And what I found was when I was out hiking, or doing any kind of long distance uh, walk, that accessing my camera gear was just an absolute pain because there was no separation between the insert and the top of the bag. So if I've got my camera gear in the bottom, all of my insulated jackets and waterproofs and food in the top, and I would open the front cover like so, and then everything would spill out and I'd have to pull out my camera inserts because you couldn't open the camera inserts without removing them from the bag. And yeah, it was just... Uh, it was almost perfect, but a real, real faff when it came to actually getting your camera out and taking some photographs. Okay, so, Manfrotto got in touch. Uh, this was a few years ago now, and they sent me a Manfrotto Off-Road, which is very similar to the Low Pro Pro Rover, but it's a bit smaller, it's lighter, um, and it looked pretty cool, so I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. And it's got a side camera insert, and it goes into there. Um, just the same problem I found with the Low Pro was accessing my camera gear was not the easiest. So I kept finding myself going back to this beast, the big Low Pro, the Low Pro that I've had for going on 10 years, the Low Pro that fits everything, holds everything, and just seemed irreplaceable until now. This is the F Stop Tie Loper, 55 litre camera bag. And I have to say, that after six months of hard use, I'm ready to talk about it. So essentially, this is a big 55 litre rucksack, okay? Now, the problem I had with my other hiking rucksacks, not camera bags, was access to the gear was always, always, always a nightmare. There was too much of a compromise. Whereas the access to this is fantastic, the opening is on the back of the bag, and it's also separate from the main compartment of the bag. So, in the top, I can have all kinds of stuff. By the way, I have no idea what's in here. Hopefully nothing embarrassing pops out. There you go, rear, rear access. You see, straight in, no mess in, a dedicated compartment, or a dedicated lid, sorry, to access my camera gear. With absolutely no faff. Then when we open the lid of the bag, you can see we have a generous space in there, and that will hold everything I need. Uh, it will hold jackets, food, water. We have mesh pockets in the lid here. We also have a very, very generous top-loading lid compartment here with more mesh pockets. These mesh pockets are good for things like keys, wallets, phones, stuff that you don't really want to lose when out in a dark field somewhere. There is also a generous front pocket, just here, just a front loading pocket, I don't know, you could put in a map, you could put in a bottle of water, whatever, and then they've even put in a little pocket at the very front. There is a very generous side, side pocket, actually make that two generous side pockets. There is also a plethora of attachment points on this bag so you can customize it. We have loops at the bottom of the bag here so you can strap on external activities. It's absolutely ah, solid, tough, well made, weather resistant ish, and then it have a, a rain cover which obviously just throws over the top to make it completely weather sealed. Very, very, very generous thick heavyweight shoulder straps. Look at that, very, very thick. And the same goes for the hip belt. Very thick, very spongy, very padded, which makes the bag incredibly comfortable. So the way the bag works is that it's customizable. You buy the bag, you buy different sized inserts depending on what you need. At the minute with this bag, I have a large camera insert. Never have I ever ran out of space putting in camera gear and video gear. I also have a medium insert, which is a bit smaller, 
which to be honest I haven't really needed to use. I've always just used a large one and that still gives me ample space in the top of my bag for everything else I need. So my first concern with this bag was that it was going to be too big to travel with but you kind of have this reassurance at the back of your mind because the camera inserts that go in the bag they're very easy to remove and then they just become a small cube. So worst case scenario if you're at the check-in desk and they say your bag's too big or your bag's too heavy or whatever you can say okay no problem and you can just remove the camera insert and you'll have a lovely compact cube and they can't argue against that and that is a kind of worst case scenario and I haven't had to do that yet because I have a bit of a hack on how to get this bag onto an aeroplane. So as I mentioned this bag is incredibly customizable. What I've done is I've taken a couple of these straps, these webbing straps with the clips, you know the standard things and I've attached them to two points at the top of the bag so this is on the lid at the back so what I can do is I can fasten these and then let's put this isn't the easiest place to show you and then I can take the strap and cinch it down Ugh. effectively what I'm doing is I'm squashing the bag and I'm just compressing it and then you also have a plethora of straps and webbing on the side of the bag Fasten those in and then uh, you can really, really squeeze the bag and basically crush it down to make it small enough to go on any aeroplane. So the list of positives with this bag is endless. It's big, spacious, comfortable, ergonomic, holds everything, well built, tough, weather sealed everything. It's a fantastic bag but it wouldn't be fair of me to make this video without talking about some of the negatives about this bag. And the first negative and the biggest negative and also the most awkward negative is its price. The reason it's awkward is because I didn't pay for this bag. F-Stop reached out to me about six months ago and said Tom would love you to try one of our bags and I said no, no I'm happy, happy with my low pro. Um, and he said, no, no, let's send you one. So I said, all right, you can send me one, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to do a review, review video. I'm not going to do any sponsored videos. But if you want to send me one, I'm happy to try it. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I've had so many comments on my videos from people saying, what bag are you using? And I've been so happy with it over six months that I actually genuinely want to make this video. But let's talk about the negatives, the price. My God, it's expensive. I mean, it's eye-wateringly expensive. If you want this bag with the insert that's currently in it, which is a large, and you go to Amazon, you're gonna be looking at about 400 pounds. Uh, US dollars, I don't know, like 460 US dollars. So it's eye-wateringly expensive, okay? And that's just for the bag and the insert. Now I said that one of the positives with this bag is that it's modular. That is also one of the negatives. Because it's modular, every little accessory you have to buy separately. And that, in a way, I don't know, it's a double-edged sword. For me, it's a really good thing because it means you're not getting stuff that you don't need, right? It's like, oh, I could really do with this rain cover, for example. So you go and you buy it, but who has to buy a rain cover? <laughs> you know what I mean? A rain cover should come with a bag. And I'm gonna have to actually fact check this, but I don't believe that a rain cover comes with this bag as standard. Looking on the Amazon list, and I can't see a rain cover in there, it actually says compartment for a rain cover. So if you're getting this bag and it comes and you've just spent upwards of 400 pounds on it, you're gonna be pretty miffed when you realize that it doesn't come with a rain cover. And then all of the other little bits and pieces that you might wanna buy extra clips so you can cinch the bag down for airports and things like that, which I just showed you, all of that you have to buy separately. So it's gonna to continue to add up. Now that's, I think that would be more of a positive if the base price of the bag was less. Um, but you know, it's like anything, anything that's good and of high quality, it's gonna be expensive. Let me talk about another negative with this bag. Now, I'm nitpicking, you know, I'm being super critical. Okay, this is a flippy, you know, the back where you open it and then you access all your gear. Oh, I'm, I'm so disappointed that they've put webbing on here. Now, I'm not sure what this webbing is for because webbing, usually you either stuff, stuff things underneath it, like memory cards, which you're never gonna do in this case because they won't be secure, or you clip things onto it, like you might clip on a, I don't know, a little waterproof stuff sack or something like that. You know, you can clip a plethora of things onto here, but 
that's just never going to happen because anything that you clip on here is going to come into direct contact with whatever is in here, right? So you're never going to put anything on there. A, it'll probably fall out if you wedge a spare battery or a memory card. So, and, and then it's, gonna, it's just going to bang off the top of your camera. So this webbing here, honestly, it would have been so easy just to put a nice little pot, like there's a pocket. There's a pocket here, right? I keep my cable release in there. There's a pocket there. Why on earth have not put like a big plastic pocket like, hang on, just like this. A nice plastic pocket that you can actually keep memory cards, batteries and things like that. That is, I don't know, uh, possibly an oversight, I'm not sure, but it, to me it seems like it would have been very straightforward to do and it's such a shame because that is just a waste of space. But yeah, I'm being very critical. Well, <laughs> I've racked my brains and aside from the price and the sort of inefficient use of space on the opening lid, I cannot think of any more negatives about this bag. It's fantastic. The one thing I would stress, the one thing I would, the message I would give to F-Stop is if you're gonna design a bag for outdoor, adventure, high activity use, so this is clearly a landscape photographer's bag. If you're gonna design a bag that's gonna be used in the outdoors, just throw in a rain cover. Just, just, just build it into the price throw it in because any photographer that spends upwards of 400 quid on a bag designed for the outdoors is going to be so aggrieved at not having a rain cover included with it that it's just mind-blowing, you know. Every bag designed for the outdoors should come with a rain cover. That would be it. Three negatives. Price, no rain cover, inefficient use of space on the lid. The positives massively, massively outweigh the negatives. Now I mentioned before that this bag wouldn't be used for camping and stuff like that and there is a great example of that in my next video which sees me doing a 77 mile four day hike right through the UK's most beautiful scenery, the most beautiful national park, the Lake District, which is my favorite place to photograph in the world. So yeah, we do a four day, 77 mile photography hike, wild camping along the way. And I'm sorry to say I didn't take that bag because, well, it would have never worked. All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you wanna learn more about this bag and you've come into a bit of wedge recently, then I'm gonna stick a link, it's an Amazon link, it's an affiliate link, I have to let you know that by law. Uh, but that's in the description below, you can go and check out the bag. And if you watch any of my videos over the past, I don't know, six months, then you'll see that I am consistently using this bag, it's fantastic. And yeah, I, that's it, I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye for now.